Dear friends, good morning. Um, my name is Salman Sharif. I'm the president of the World's Final Golan Society and co-chair of the WFNS Fine Committee. I'm grateful for giving the opportunity to speak to the audience, uh, the amazing audience that you have of MISSAB Surgical Symposium. Uh, my topic for today is indications for fusion in lumbar spinal stenosis. Pathology, stenosis of canal and lateral um, recess associated with facet hypertrophy, ligaments hypertrophy, collapse disc, and combination of all uh, producing symptoms. Rationale to intervene, decompress, and improve function. And the question, question is, uh, do we need to restore the surgical balance, address listhesis, or do you want beautiful pictures? So do you want to have decompression or fusion or not? So we did look at this uh, five RCT included in this uh, systemic review in which um, uh, there are studies from 90s and there are two new studies, uh, uh, one from Gogawala and one from Frost uh, from 2016 published in the same journal. Uh, these RTs, RCTs um, had a large number of patients and the follow-up um, was significantly large too. And they looked at different outcomes as shown here. And these uh, RCTs involving 438 patients showed that there was no significant difference between the two surgical procedures in terms of functional ODI, ODI scores at baseline and at two years follow-up respectively. So these two surgical procedures are fusion and decompression alone. There's low quality of evidence of meta-analysis uh, because of the heterogeneity of the various studies over um, a large um, period of time. So that is over two and a half decades. Factors not um, studied are cis factor selecting patients who may have failure following decompression alone. They've got facet angle more than 50 degrees associated with 40% rate of reoperation. Disc height more than 6.5 millimeter was associated with 45 degree uh, percent, um, percent rate of reoperation and motion at spondylolisthesis of more than 1.25 centimeter associated with nearly half reoperation rate. Patient who had more than three risk factors, but if you have all three risk factors, instability had a 75 percent rate of reoperation. Patients with no risk factor for instability had a zero percent rate of reoperation. So this is a, a brilliant study that showed all these and you know it's important for us to um, understand these factors well. Uh, what about the facet joint, joint uh, orientation and tropism? Studies with very large, very low quality evidence have suggested that increased sagittal orientation of facet is associated with, with um, stenosis. While sagittally oriented facets have been associated with stenosis, their role in the development of the disease and stability of the disease is very controversial. So if you look at this, you've got this um, stabilized signs with disc height loss, um, stable uh, slip one on top of the other, and on top of it, lack of facet joint diffusion. So you could grade accordingly and decide is this significant or not. There's a linear correlation with degree of instability at the segment with facet joint diffusion. Several proposals uh, are there and there are several ways of calculating facet joint fluid diffusion. And that, but the problem is it's very low to a very low quality of evidence. Presence of facet joint effusion, best seen on spinal uh, axial MRI images, appear to have linear correlation with instability. Uh, what about re stabilization signs? There is no firm agreement on what parameters indicate a re stabilization segment, but osteophyte formation, vertebral end plate sclerosis, and ligament ossification have been implicated with low quality evidence. So uh, this type three unstable um, stenosis shows translation uh, along with uh, large facet diffusions and MRI and subtle re-stabilization time as well. Uh, facet joint diffusion, uh, very low to uh, low quality evidence available for that. But this was a very good study which showed that type one stable, type two potentially unstable and type three is unstable. And the suggestion was with stable, you decompress, potentially unstable, you decompress and fuse, and unstable, you decompress and fuse. Again, the quality of evidence is low uh, here over here. And same uh, fusion algorithm was done by Andrew Simmons um, in this study. 
Questions that need answering. Patient with stenosis, no sign symptoms, instability in predominant leg pain. Decompression alone is recommended, moderate to high evidence. Patients with stenosis and stable spondylolisthesis uh, with re-stabilization seen. Fusion will not help. Decompression alone is suggested. Available literature, moderate. Uh, do we have an answer? Yes. Unstable spondylolisthesis with symptoms. If you have these, uh, they may require fusion. Again, the evidence, unfortunately, is low. Uh, probably it will help. Chief complaints of mechanical lower back pain with listhesis, available literature, low. Fusion is controversial. Stable listhesis is deformity, loss of balance. If symptomatic, may need correction of underlying deformity with decompression and instrumentation. Again, fusion is controversial. Evidence is low. Passive joint diffusion, is it significant? Available literature, low to medium, fusion recommended, controversial. Lastly, facet joint diffusion alone is not proven to correlate with instability. Fusion not recommended. So according to these, there is no difference if you fuse or not to fuse. So majority of the time, the decision is clinical instead of looking at x-rays. Thank you.